Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to yet another interesting video. In this video, we are going to explore the single line diagram of the medium voltage switchgear panel. So you can see one example on your screen. Now, before we go and understand the single line diagram, let us quickly have one simple example which will help you understand uh, the single line diagrams more clearly. So imagine I have three different manufacturing unit as you can see on your screen. This is one, this is second and this is the third one now i have few requirements here one i want to give dedicated supply unit for all these three factories so i don't want to use any common supply i want to have dedicated feeders for all these three factories that is my first requirement second requirement is i want to also have supply redundancy that means in case of one of my supply fails i want to have another supply uh, that can feed my factory and thereby i will not lose any production hours i will not lose any money so that is my two critical requirements for this factory units clear now with this understanding in mind let us go and understand the single line diagram so this will give you a better idea of single line diagram all right so here is the single line diagram of the medium voltage switchgear panel as i mentioned we have three different factory units and we need to provide supply to that so to provide supply to this factory unit, first of all, of course, we need to take the supply from, let's say, the local uh, electricity distribution company or the local electric substation that we have. So here is our first panel. So here you can see the symbol that is uh, showing it upward. That means this is the incoming supply. This is where the cables are entering. OK, here we will connect the cable. Now, the moment we connect the cable, you can see we have connected a voltage transformer which will help us in measuring the incoming supply voltage, whether the supply voltage is within the tolerance limit or not, or it, if it is fluctuating too much, that information we will get with the help of this voltage transformer. Not only this, but if we want to, you know, provide some sort of protection, uh, then this voltage transformer will again help us with that. This is the symbol of voltage transformer and on top of this uh, rectangle what you can see is basically the fuse that we have. So it is a fuse protected voltage transformer. Clear? And again you will notice uh, this particular symbol here. This means that this voltage transformer is basically a withdrawable type voltage transformer. Now, what is that? It means that if necessary I can take out this voltage transformer, remove that voltage transformer completely from the panel. So that uh, possibility, that feature is provided here. If it is just a fixed type, then it will have a simple connection like this. Uh, we will not show it like this uh, with a bracket symbol, right? So whenever there is a bracket symbol or something like that, it means it's a withdrawable type component. Clear? So this is a voltage transformer with a switch and a withdrawable type capabilities then moving on we have a vpis system in place now what is vpis vpis is a voltage presence indication system this will help us to know that whether there is a supply in the panel or not so in case if we want to carry out some maintenance we want to be 100 percent sure that the supply is turned off because human safety is the highest uh, Thing that we should be caring about so this vpis system help us in knowing that uh, there will be indication there will be lights provided which will glow if there is a supply so that system is there and parallel to that you can see a earth switch is also provided this is again a safety feature so this earth switch will help us in grounding the trap charges so let's say there are cables running in so if that cables is having some ground trap charges these are things which will help us uh, ground those trap charges uh, that will again provide us the safety so that is the earth switch that we have along with the voltage presence indication system moving on we have a current transformer so this symbol the circle simple circle what you can see represents a current transformer current transformer just like the voltage transformer also help us in measuring uh, the sub current that is flowing into the system and also it will help us in the protection if needed so if you want to you know have some sort of protection with related to current that can be provided with the help of this current transformer that we have and you can also notice uh, a connection is given here 
uh, that is going towards the circuit breaker. So that means the input of current transformer is given to the circuit breaker, maybe to its strip coil. And based on the inputs of that, the circuit breaker can trip. So this uh, line represents that. Clear? So that is current transformer. And if you go uh, towards the next side, you will see we have a circuit breaker. So this is the symbol of circuit breaker. And this is a vacuum circuit breaker. That's why it is written as a VCB, vacuum circuit breaker, which is most commonly used in the medium voltage switch gear. And if you are interested in knowing about the vacuum circuit breaker or circuit breaker in general, I have a dedicated playlist on that. I'll put a link for it down in the description. You can go and check it out after this video. So this is a VCB. Again, if you notice, it is, uh, you know, wrapped around this uh, uh, bracket type symbol. That again means it's a withdrawable type circuit breaker, which means that this circuit breaker can be removed whenever it is necessary. So in case of maintenance, uh, this circuit breaker can be removed. And since we are using a withdrawable type circuit breaker, that is also the reason why you will find there is no disconnector used in the complete single line diagram. You see, uh, we don't have any disconnector used here because when you remove the circuit breaker, you have a visible isolation. A human eye can see that visible isolation. That's why a disconnector is not necessary in this scenario. But if it is fixed type uh, circuit breaker, then uh, it is good to have a disconnector because that will give you a visible isolation. Clear? So this is a vacuum circuit breaker. And this complete thing will be enclosed inside a metal enclosure. And that is what we call as the incomer panel. Clear? This is my incomer panel. This is where I accept the incoming supply. So this is part one. Now, from this incomer panel, definitely we need to provide supply to our different manufacturing unit. So you can see supply is going like this. And from this, it will flow like this. So here, there is one more panel that we have. Now, let us quickly see what is there. We first, we have the vacuum circuit breaker here. Again, it's a withdrawable type vacuum circuit breaker to which uh, the input is coming from the CT. This is a current transformer. Again, we are providing a voltage presence indication system. And there is a earthing switch also provided for safety purpose. Here you will see that uh, we do not have any sort of voltage transformer because this is the supply going to the factory. And I don't need to measure that because I'm measuring the incoming supply that is coming. And this is the symbol that indicates downward. That means from here, the cables are going out to my, let's say, uh, unit one. So this is where uh, the supply is going. This is where I'm fedding my unit one. So this panel, this will be again enclosed in a metal enclosure. This will be called as, let's say, feeder one. This is my feeder one panel. Clear? Uh, most of the equipments that you see here are similar to that of the um, uh, incomer panel that we saw. Now, uh, the ratings of this might vary depending on what current rating your incomer is, what current rating your feeder is. So uh, that may vary. Uh, most of the time, you will also find that ratings are also mentioned on the single line diagram. If it is given, it is uh, good to know that currently on this example, what you can see, those ratings are not mentioned. So this is the panel to uh, where we are giving supply to our unit one. Similarly, this is the identical panel that we have, and this is helping us in feeding the power to, let's say, manufacturing unit two. So this is my feeder panel two. Clear? So these are the two factory units that we have. Now you remember I mentioned initially that I want to have supply redundancy as well. So that problem we have not solved yet. So for this, what we want is we want one more supply line or one more feeder that is coming in to our manufacturing unit. So imagine we here we have a different feeder that is coming into our system. There will be one incomer panel to that also. Now from this a feeder or from this uh, different substation, we are taking the supply and we are feeding our unit three. Here, same equipment you can see we have vacuum circuit breaker, current transformer, VPIS, and then supplying power to that. Now, this feeder is at a different feeder. These two feeders are at a different feeder. So, in case one, one of my feeder fails, uh, I will still have one 
feeder, one unit running and two feeder lost. But this again is not solving the purpose. Uh, this is still not the supply redundancy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to these two different bus bar or these two different feeders that is coming into my factory. So how we can do that? We can do that by connecting these two different feeders in series with each other, right? We need to connect it in series. If we connect it in parallel, of course, it's of no use. So we need to connect these things into series. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a dedicated panel. Let me show you that panel here. Let me clear all these things here. Okay. So here you can see uh, this is the supply coming and this is the panel that we have. So first we have the vacuum circuit breaker just as any of the feeder panel that we saw, a current transformer and VPIS and earthing switch. Now this panel, the job of this panel is specifically to connect my this feeder and the another feeder that we have. So this is coupling the two different bus bar and hence this panel is called as a bus coupler panel. Right. This is called as bus coupler panel. This is coupling the two different bus bars that we have. How we are connecting? We are connecting it in the series. Clear. And all the required equipments are also connected here. But uh, here we have connected the single uh, uh, two different bus bar with the help of bus coupler panel. But if you notice, there is one problem here now. The height of the bus bar has changed. So let me show that to you here. Height of the bus bar is at this level, right? Similarly, here also the height is at this level. But since we are using a bus coupler panel and it is connected in series, now the height of the bus bar has come down to this level. So in order to have a systematic connection and a proper installation, we need to raise the height of the bus bar, right? And for that, you can see we are using one more panel here which is helping us in raising the height of the bus bar. So from this height, we are taking the height to this level again with the help of this panel. And this is called as bus riser. Right. The job of this is simply to raise the height of the bus bar. And you will notice there are no equipment provided in this panel. Of course, it is not required. The only things that you will notice in the bus riser panel is the bus bars that is running from bottom to top. Sometimes if required, can it can have a current transformer, but uh, mostly you will not find any sort of equipment connected to that. Clear? So uh, that is the bus riser panel and that is the purpose of that. Now, the question is, you may have this question, how this bus coupler panel will work? So let us quickly understand that. Let me clear out the drawing here. So now how this bus coupler panel is working. So in normal scenario, imagine uh, both our supplies are working, both feeders are working. So this particular feeder is feeding this unit and this unit normally. And the second feeder is feeding this unit normally, right? No problem with that. Now imagine this feeder has failed. Okay, our feeder one has failed and it is not giving any power to our uh, manufacturing unit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open uh, this vacuum circuit breaker and I'm going to close this circuit breaker of bus coupler. Now in normal scenario which we saw of just now the bus coupler circuit breaker will be in the open condition unless the both the bus bars are at the same potential. Most of the time this uh, vacuum circuit breaker the bus coupler circuit breaker will be in the open condition but when my feeder one fails I'm going to close this so now what is happening is the supply is flowing like this. So you see it will flow like this. It will go into this panel. Then it will go into this panel. It will not go in here because we have opened the circuit breaker here. So thereby, even if uh, my feeder one has failed, I'm still continuing sub giving the supply to all my manufacturing unit. Thereby, I have achieved the supply redundancy that I talked about initially. Clear? So that is the reason why we need to have bus coupler and bus riser panel. I hope uh, you understood this simple single line diagram of uh, the medium voltage switchgear panel. If you have any doubts, uh, you can feel free to put it in the comment section below.
And by the way, if you're interested in learning more about the single line diagram, how to read the single line diagram, or if you want to know about the single line diagram of the higher voltage substation like 145 kV, 245 kV, then I do have a dedicated playlist on single line diagram. I'll put a link for it down in the description. You can definitely go and check it out to learn more about the single line diagram. And if you found this video helpful, then of course there is a like button which you can click on it and let me know that this type of videos are helping you. And if this was helpful, then do comment helpfully in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in my next one with yet another interesting video. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.